Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 46 of the 40K Badcast. My name is Dan Boyd, and I'm joined, as always, by the best guy from Massachusetts ever. Not <laughs> me, because I ain't from here. Sorry. The best guy from Connecticut ever, Gumbo McSlumbo. <laughs> the worst part is, I'm actually from Maryland. <laughs> oh, no. Fuck. Uh, oh, that sucks. That's why you can't drive, because you literally can't drive. <laughs> oh, It's in my genes. I'm genetically incapable of making a car move. It's true. Well, I, I wish Woof. some of these Maryland drivers around here would stop making their cars move. <laughs> Maryland drivers, am I right? <laughs> I, I don't know. Am I right? I need to know. <laughs> it's always the next state over is like the worst oh, driving yeah. state. Oh, yeah, like, I first heard the term masshole when I lived in Connecticut, and once I moved to Massachusetts, we're all like, fucking New York drivers. <laughs> <laughs> fucking New York. Okay, well, that's great. Let's uh, let's stop talking about our regional traffic issues <laughs> and move into our actual 40K podcast. In record time, too. Right, yeah, not a whole lot of divergence mm -hmm. in this episode. So let's get into the aspects where we talk about what's on our hobby radar and... Let's talk about a little bit of hobby progress. Campbell, I got my fifth squad of intercessors done. It only took me a month and a half. <laughs> Man, that after paying that fifth squad of intercessors, that sixth squad of intercessors coming up must seem like the light at the end of the tunnel. I, dude, okay, so I finished painting them. I haven't taken pictures yet just because I, I literally finished painting them the day I was going to use them in a game. <laughs> so I, I didn't take pictures when I was done. Uh, like that morning, I got up early to... Uh, varnish them and make sure uh, and put uh, decals and everything on them. It was real dumb. Yeah. Uh, so I haven't gotten around I, to taking pictures of them yet. They look great and I can see it. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I have five more intercessors to go for the sixth squad and then I'm doing uh, the option for power fists for mm -hmm. all six squads and then two more auxiliary grenade launchers because the guys... The squads that come in the Dark Imperium box set don't come with auxiliary grenade launchers. Correct. And, auxiliary, and if I'm going to do six sergeants, I might as well get a box of ten because five is less than six, and I need six. And, you know, you know how it is. So, yeah, I know how basic, very basic, <laughs> not even elementary school math works. Only just, so I, but I do know. So I'm building them, uh, and I think before I do my six squad, I am actually going to prioritize doing three Power Fist sergeants. Just so I can get those done first because I need them for Adepticon. Well, I do mm. not need the sixth squad of intercessors gotcha. for Adepticon, though I hope to have every all my intercessors done by Adepticon. That would be super cool. So these guys, I assume they look great because your standard of painting is very nice. Uh, oh, well, thank you. As you varnish them right before the game, I'm assuming they also smelled great. I, well, I, I use that tester's doll coat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've described the tester's dull coat as smelling like alcohol death before. Yeah, I think so, it smells kind of like mm, cancer and birth defects. Like, it's, <laughs> it smells awful. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, they, they don't, it doesn't smell great. Not gonna lie. But they're done, and they're varnished, and they look nice. Uh, and I, I, I'm just getting through them, man. I'm just getting through these fucking intercessors. Nice. Soon I'll be done. And nice. I won't have to do any more intercessors probably forever probably <laughs> hopefully fingers to, fucking crossed <laughs> you're not gonna flesh out the entire company i'm not no i'm not okay so i'll have 30 right mm -hmm. so like if somebody i forget who somebody's like oh you're gonna get 60 <laughs> like nah i'm not gonna get 60 yeah i really not, don't have that drive with primaris marines like i did with regular marines like i would never field a tactical squad of less than 10 but i have no desire to field a squad of 10 uh intercessors or whatever yeah, I, neither do I. Like, I, I know that some people love to field, like, these big squads, mm -hmm. especially Blood Angels players, because Blood Angels intercessors are actually fucking radical in combat. All right. You know, they get that plus one to wound. If mm -hmm. they charge, are charged, or do a heroic intervention, of course, they can't heroically intervene. But if they're charged or they charge, they get a plus one to wound, which means, I mean, they're already hitting on threes because yeah. they're Marines. They're Marines, so, yeah. So if they're hitting anything strength four or they're wounding on threes, uh, anything... Uh, or toughness for other toughness three or less they're wounding on twos and then they're they're wounding land raiders on fives yeah that's kind of silly yeah but i see why you'd want a bunch of them yeah yeah <laughs> but for raven guard 
you know, it doesn't, I don't, I don't really think it's going to matter that much, but, but it doesn't matter either way. Cause I'm not fucking doing it. No, it's not your problem anymore. No, no. After, after, uh, after these next 13 models of intercessors, I, I, I get to say I am done with intercessors forever. Nice. I can only hope that I'm also done with Inceptors forever, but who <laughs> knows what we'll get. But we'll get to what we're getting in a moment. First, got to tell me what you've achieved with your hobby well, progress. Speaking of bad smells and Intercessors, uh, I was building a squad of five more, just so you know, I have my second squad of five, and I'm using plastic glue, and uh, Anne's there, and she just turns to me and says, you can't ever complain about how bad my nail polish smells ever again. <laughs> Ooh, she's right, though. Yeah, no, it smells Similarly cancerous and similarly flammable to both uh, Tester's Dolco and the Badcast Bad Shirt available at shop.spreadshirt.com slash 40k badcast. But um, extremely but flammable. That's, extremely our, flammable. that's, our, extremely that's our registered trademark. Badcast Bad <laughs> Shirt. Extremely flammable. <laughs> yeah, I built those five guys and I, you know, they're pretty much out of the box with some purity seals here and there. And I converted the sergeant to have a power fist and a back banner because, you know, I like doing that. And I gave him a spare extra head, and, like nothing too special with them. But I did finish my five hell blasters, which were almost done last week at, or last time we recorded. And they are all set. They're good to go. They got their caution striped guns. They got their heraldry. They got their chipping, their weathering, the whole deal. And I also uh, was able to put together and prime and paint three Inceptors, and they came out, and they look pretty damn good. How did you enjoy painting them? Honestly, not bad at all. Uh, I did them in sub-assemblies of three. So each guy was um, the body, where they were uh, floating up and generally plastic glued onto some chunks of rubble and rebar and so on. So they look like they're floating without being on the actual doodle bopper stands. Yep. Then I had uh, my tried and true patented thumbtack glued to a piece of wood off cut for uh, a little painting <laughs> handle of I had that for each of their heads and for each of their backpacks. Okay. And it made painting them super easy. I put them together once everything was painted and highlighted. And then I just did all the weathering when it was all assembled like that. So you did not use the flight stands. No. So you're smart. I'm an idiot, but you, <laughs> you're smart because you didn't use those fucking flight stands. Well, I am standing on the shoulders of slightly taller than me giants here because people have come before me and used these flight stands and complained about them. Because while I think they do look pretty good, I actually don't mind the kind of, it looks kind of like a Christmas ornament upside down in a way like that little plastic hook. I don't mind the look of it. I just know the contact point is fairly small and I like to actually use colored spray primer and so on. I don't want to prime over it or have to paint around this little clear plastic stand. Yeah, if, I, if if listeners come away from this podcast with one thing, I want it to be that never use those fucking flight stands for your Inceptors. Figure something else out. Yeah, the only time I use flight stands really is on like my land speeders, my Templars, where they just have a magnet. And, you know, it's a magnet on either end of the flight stand, and that works well enough. But, yeah, I don't like the idea of gluing clear plastic to the actual model. It seems to always snap off and be very difficult to fix. So in the last two weeks, you've managed to paint Finish your Hellblasters, paint a squad of Inceptors, and put together a squad of Intercessors, and I have finished my five models. Oh, yeah. I also built the Dark Oath Chieftain for a painting challenge, uh -huh, and I, yes, built, I yes. built the Primaris Ancient this morning when I should have been working. <laughs> okay. All right. God damn it. <laughs> Fuck. I, I, I want to do stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I want to paint and model and, and all sorts of shit, but I get tired at like 11, dude. I got to go to sleep. I got to wake up. No, I, I know you are a decrepit old man of 30 something. So, all right. Well, is that it for your stuff? Yeah, that's it. The only other thing I've been doing is trying to figure how much foam I actually need for my Primaris boys. And uh, it's more than I more than I wanted. Get a hard case. Uh, the, the GW hard case? Yep. OK, I have um, I have I got one from Adepticon, if you remember. No, yeah, from yeah, Nova. Yeah. I'm sorry. I th was it Adepticon or Nova? It was Adepticon. It was Adepticon. It was Adepticon. I, yeah, I didn't get it. Yeah, uh, that is enough to carry. Oh, geez, I have like all of my Primaris in that one case, and it's I've still got a bunch of extra room in there. I will, I will consider that. I'll and it's that a very open. hefty, high quality plastic case too. Well, you know, I like them hefty. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's a. Uh, Oh, I'm just, I am just uh, grasping at what straws I can here. Let's move on to. We don't new always stuff. have to make jokes, you know. We can, we can get out there and put like good hobby advice out on our show. It doesn't have to all be fucking jokes, Campbell. You haven't seen our contract, have you? <laughs> I didn't, didn't know we had contracts. Anyways, let's uh, let's move on to games played. You get any games played? 
No, I haven't. That's 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 where I've been kind of uh, behind, is I have not gotten to play at all. I will get a game in this Saturday. I don't know if it's going to be Necro or 40K or what, but I will be playing a game soon. Oh, good for you. I got a couple of games in. We opened up the Estratus campaign. Listeners oh, will remember yeah. last episode we talked with rob jones about his campaign that he's running and we had the opening salvos of the campaign last weekend Mm -hmm. and uh, woo buddy it's 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 happening we did so we i did two campaign games we went over to our our friend jason's house he hosted for a day i only got two games in because i wanted to leave around dinner time to get back and hang out with my fiance uh we did a six person 500 point free-for-all battle that Which, sounds like chaos. It was like lowercase actually, chaos. Actually, it was really, really well done. Rob is a super smart guy, and he designed this mission extremely well, where you were given six pieces of paper with numbers one through six written on them, okay. and you bid for deployment and then for each turn. And the okay. person who bids the lowest gets to deploy first, and the person who bids the highest for each turn, and there are five turns, gets to uh, go first. So it was it was very, actually worked very well. I, I mean, it still was a long time because it's six people, but at only 500 yeah. points apiece, it was uh, manageable. Uh, and our group, we had two objectives in the center of the table. It was this comms tower that you had to take out. And then there were mm-hmm. some, uh, you could get campaign points for killing war ma- masters and doing all that. Uh, but our group, it was, I think I, there was a three-way tie for the comms tower at the end of it with four victory points apiece of like me, uh, our, uh, my friend Chris and, uh, I, th- I think Mike, I don't know. There's, I know Chris was one of them, but there's three way tie for the win. And then everybody else had like three points or two points or one, I don't think anybody had no points. Okay. Uh, and it was kind of a crazy battle. First turn, I bid the highest and got first turn. And I was setting up to next to this fellow, Kevin, who brought a fucking Sakaran to a 500 point battle. That, that's like half your army. Right. And I said, you know what? I don't like the look of this shit. So I charged it first turn and knocked it down from 14 to two wounds with aggressors nice. and, my, uh, and Shadow Captain Lanius. And then Shadow Captain Lanius got shot by a lot of bolters and died. Because <laughs> he, he had a squad of like seven or eight intercessors right there mm-hmm. uh, who were veteran inter- intercessors and then got to uh, do double fire uh, at just him. And he died, but... Then his all all his stuff got wiped out by uh, Jay's Dark Eldar, and it was a mess. But it was a totally fun time. Now there was another group in the campaign playing at the same same day at a game store, uh, not at Jay's house. And our friend Kevin, who who we know, beer for the beer god on the yep. uh, safe forums, he, uh, he won that one. He had like twenty points, and everybody else had none. Did he bring his knights? No, but he brought his death okay. watch, his primary death watch. Damn. Yeah. So. Uh, our battle was like a close fought, like everybody's running around. Greg Hess, our friend Greg Oles was there, yep. and he brought a Dreadnought and a bunch of Orc boys and was just charging everybody and, and screaming and running around. It was fantastic. <laughs> totally fun time and a very tight game. Then I played nice. Jay, uh, Jason, his Dark Eldar, in a 750-point battle, and I got fucking hosed. Dark he, Eldar and Marines are always a rough matchup. He brought one Ravager with mm-hmm. three Disintegrators, Yep, and it erased the squad a turn. Yes, I, I it think did. he had he had like five venoms, a ravager with a disintegrator, with three disintegrators, a raider with a dark lance, and then like his archon and a bunch of, uh, uh, I think a homunculus and a bunch of cap uh, cabalites or cabalites yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so it was it was a seize ground game, or no dominate and destroy from chapter approved twenty seventeen, which is you have to go and get as many. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, objectives? objectives and do progressive scoring with them. Okay. Uh, and so, but with his like five venoms, he was just like, now I'm on yeah, all of them and I'll stay yeah. on all of them the entire game. And oh, this, this disintegrator boat is just going to disintegrate one squad a turn of yours and everything. Mm-hmm. And you can't do anything about it because it's got 36 inch range. And I only had one unit of Hellblasters, and uh, like they didn't do that much. Though uh, he he at the I think at the end of the game he was like this is kind of this is lame. Uh, I think he was feeling that, and he ended up like charging me with his Archon and stuff. And the Archon did mm-hmm. uh, end up dying to uh, really I think Hellblasters, like the last two Hellblasters <laughs> or something. I got through his Shadow Field. It was really funny. Uh, Pretty much. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think you've thrown me a bone with that one, though. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's just uh, that's just being friendly. Because when I've played against Dark Eldar, pretty much the only time I've ever won against them with Marines has been by accident. Like, I, I never, never am able to pull through. <laughs> yeah, I think I got table on turn three at Nova against Dark Eldar, uh, yep. which... Uh, you know, disintegrator. I mean, disintegrators versus Primaris Marines. It's just, it's made to kill them pretty much. Yeah, because they are three shots apiece, strength mm-hmm. five, uh, AP Multiple. minus three, and damage two. Yeah, but uh, funnily enough, when I use my knights against Dark Eldar, I do pretty all right. <laughs> That's cool to hear. Yeah, whenever I, I, the first game of Eighth Edition, I think Jay played was against mm-hmm. me, his Dark Eldar versus my guard, and I wiped the table with him. Uh, so this was somewhat revenge for that game, but I'm sure Jay and I will meet later in the campaign and maybe I can get a modicum of revenge on him. So those were my two games this time All around. Right. It was a lot of fun. The Estratus campaign is looking like it's going to be a huge hit. Uh, there were talk about people getting, going out and getting games this weekend. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but I'm very much looking forward to continuing the struggle against the Xenos and Heretic creeps in the Estratus campaign. <laughs> Very cool. Well, I didn't get any games in, but I did meet a listener, actually. Oh, shit. So uh, I posted uh, posted on the show, whatever. I, I mentioned I was trying to get rid of some MDF terrain uh, I had, and I got contacted by a listener named Chris, and uh, we met in a Dunkin' Donuts parking lot and had a handoff. Natural. That's, yeah, that's nothing- the true Massachusetts experience right there. Yeah, well, it would be the true Massachusetts experience if somebody took like 20% of the cash he gave me for it right when he paid for it, but that's okay. Yeah, that or like somebody then crushed up a bunch of oxys and snorted them. (laughs) It's more of a New Hampshire thing. (laughs) Ah, yes. Well, I'm glad that you got to get out there and meet some of our lovely, handsome, sexy Beautiful listeners out there. I'm talking to you, listeners. He's so sexy. Yeah. I love you. In in a decidedly unhandsome, decidedly unsexy, decidedly unbeautiful parking lot of a decidedly unbeautiful Dunkin' Donuts. Don't you talk about the dunk like that. I know you love Dunkin'. I love my brown bean flavored water that is served at variable <laughs> temperatures that I can get for a dollar. All right, well, let's move it's on. better than gas station coffee. Let's move on to new stuff and hot right. pot of coffee, Campbell. There is a <laughs> little bit to talk about in this segment. Yeah. Do you want to start with the Heresy Weekender stuff or the LVO stuff? Because oh, there's a lot. Uh, let's have you start with the Heresy Weekender stuff because I didn't write any of it down. Cool. <laughs> so they shut off a bunch of Heresy stuff. Would you believe it? And the quality of it is kind of varying across the table because on the one hand, they showed off these guys, the Space Wolves, Death Sworn, who all kind of like Ulrich the yes. Slayer. Yes. And those are the first Heresy Wolf models aside from Lehman Rust that I've actually thought looked cool. Yeah, and, they, you know, they look fantastic, highly detailed. The paint job on them mm-hmm. is is awesome. Uh, yep. I think it's a very cool, like, backstory or cool fluff reasons for those guys, too. They're, it's sort of like the Space Wolves version of the Death Company. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, lot, really, really cool stuff. But, Campbell, yeah. I, I sense that you're about to throw in a however. Well, I was going to bounce back because um, uh, a lot of the other stuff didn't look so great. Um, like the white scars, for instance, their contemptor looks dope. Every contemptor so far yeah. has looked pretty dope. The praetors looked all right. Mm. And the Leviathan looked like it was just hacked together. Most of the chapter specific Leviathans look like they got the base Leviathan model, which is pretty cool. Like sculpt got some bits from chapter house studios. If you remember them and just kind of put them on them. The red scorpions, and- uh, Leviathan, their special character Leviathan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one looks amazing. Okay, I will concede that point happily. <laughs> but, That's a dope. But one. you're right. the The base Leviathan is great, but I, I, I yeah, it it does. The white scars one definitely looks pretty slapdash. Yeah, and the some of it might be the paint job because the white scars paint jobs aren't the best. Then you start getting into like some okay stuff, like the Blood Angels chapter master Ralderon. He look, which is my favorite planet that gets blown up in Star Wars. <laughs> he reminds me of the old Leonardo's figure from Blood Quest, and he's all right. He's just wiping his sword, and the paint job on him is pretty cool. But the part that has been spawning all the uh, controversy is a weird word for it. But the thing that's making the most attention is Sanguinius. Yes, and old Sanguinius. He's a polarizing miniature, and whenever I read negative opinions of him, I kind of go, are you looking at the same model I am? Because I think it looks gorgeous. Oh, it's fantastic. A lot of people were complaining about the legs 
because he's he's in a in a falling position, like he's attacking from above, and yeah. his legs are. I, I don't necessarily think they're folded in a weird way, but he's not just like jackknifing into a pool or something. Like one leg <laughs> right. is outstretched, the other one is 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 sort of tucked back in, and I I think it looks fine. Uh, but you know these these all of these Primark character models, there's opinions abound about them. I think that they're all generally very good. Like the sang- Sanguinius model is the detail on it is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like it, the the face on it is fantastic. I I don't uh, you know people are going to be they're going to complain. They're always just going to pe- yeah, yeah. people are always going to find something to complain about. But in this case I I do think that they are maybe they saw that one picture that Games Workshop posted of it and it, Maybe that picture doesn't show the legs in the best way possible. You you get a 360 on that, and I think it's fine. I think it's it's great miniature. Yeah, I, I think once you start seeing 360s of anything they post, you're like the opinion just kind of goes back towards positive. Generally, not there, you know, not that there's not bad sculpts that come out once in a while, but I think it's a gorgeous model. Although the Photoshop of him riding a skateboard is also dope as hell. Yes, that's a big one. That that was I yeah. saw that and I had a chuckle, maybe even yep. a chortle, <laughs> a fine chuff. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they showed off some other stuff. They showed up like a new mechanic, Macassus Knight, and some other Mechanicum stuff that all looks chunky, but looks good. Not really wowing me. They there's like a render of a jump pack contemptor, which is incredibly funny to me. Um, yeah, well, but, I'm, I'm, I saw that, and my immediate thought was, "Ooh, I'm gonna need three of those." <laughs> <laughs> I just remember when the like, the uh, initial Blood Angels Codex came out, like in fifth edition, where you had the librarian dreadnoughts who could fly with the psychic power. Yeah. There was just this one illustration of like a um, like a swooping hawk flying away from a dreadnought that's flying at him. The dreadnought's just saying "fucking Xenos," yeah. and that's just what I think the moment I see that sort of thing. No, I I am one hundred percent there for a contemptor dreadnought with the fly keyword. <laughs> I just I picture it does not look aerodynamic. It looks like it would just like the jets would boost and it would just like flip over onto its face. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I might be wrong. We'll, we'll, when we actually see the real model and not just a render, I'll be able to have a better opinion of it. I still, I think it's a little silly. You might need to give them Buzz Light your wings or something. But <laughs> Like but, I said, if that comes out and they make 40k rules for it, your boy's getting three. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the real the real takeaway from the Heresy Weekend or the stuff that I'm most excited about because I'm not playing the perfect game at this point in time is all the Necromunda shit because they posted a bunch of it or they just, I think they showed yeah they showed a bunch there and they pulled some out of a box on a stream and a lot of it looks really cool yeah they have models for a bunch of the bounty hunters that are in the Necromunda rulebook that they haven't put models out for uh, Ortum 88 the Psyker who looks like a floating potato. <laughs> he looks like Baron Harkonnen, but he looks like a blob from some certain angles. Yeah. Uh, they had the Arturus, whatever, the, the rich Bertram guy. Bertram Arturus the third. Yeah, yeah, Bertram Arturus, yeah. I love that model. I think that's a fantastic model. Buddy, I am extremely excited about Necromunda. I yeah. want to get through these intercessors so I can finish painting all my shit for Cinco de Necro coming up in May. Mm-hmm. And uh, April and May, well, it's just really just April because we're <laughs> doing it so early. Yeah. Oh, God, I got to get painting. Fuck. Uh, I hadn't thought about that yet. Shit. Okay. Well, fuck. All right. <laughs> Shit. I might not have any bounty hunters for Cinco, but I'll have a lot of well, fucking Orlocks. How about that? If you, if you want to borrow some, I got some. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, I've already been talking with Julian about how I was going to bring an Ambot if they release it in time for maybe for reasons. Maybe. Yeah, so, for very cool reasons. Yeah, so shit. Okay, well now <laughs> now I gotta now when I get get home I gotta hit my combo board up and fucking organize myself. Shit. My, oh boy. My favorite part of this hobby is the spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they put out a lot of cool stuff uh, yep. for Necromunda. Uh, I don't think any of it's been released yet since the no uh, Heresy Weekender, but a lot of really cool pictures and models in there. And yep. uh, this was most of the stuff came from the stream and people were pulling screenshots off of that, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where it was mostly coming from. So you got like the human ammo jack, which I like even more than the new squat ammo jack, which is saying a lot <laughs> because I love me some stunties. Um, they showed a bunch of really beautiful preview art showing some yes. like other kinds of gangs. The ash waste to nomads and stuff. Yep, yeah, I love the, like the yeah. kind of Harlequin looking folks, not like Eldar Harlequin, but like 
theater Harlequin looking folks. Yeah. The full, yeah, oh God, there's some gorgeous stuff in there. The, I, I think the real winners here are the bomb rats because they're like peak weird Warhammer. Yeah. Well, I, it's, it's very exciting that we're just, we're going to get continued support with Necromunda. We are going to have a lot of new releases coming down the pike and I'm excited for that. Yeah, I'm. The, you need that stuff to kind of keep the game alive and keep the flow of information coming, and I'm very happy about that. Yeah, so let's pivot and talk about LVO for a moment. Mm-hmm. So two things to talk about, and we'll talk one real short. Uh, our buddy Scott Horace Heresy got seventh place in the GT at LVO. Woo, congrats, Scott. Yeah, so he was trying to crack top eight. It looked like he wasn't going to crack top eight. He won, I think he went six and one. He lost in round seven. And then I think somebody lost in the round after that or lost that round and ended up having a lower score than him. So yep. he was went from, I think, ninth to seventh because of scoring mechanics. Uh, and so congratulations, Scott. We're very proud of you. We're very happy for you. And I uh, can't wait until I play him in the Astratus campaign and he uh, kicks my ass all around the well, town. I beat Scott once, so that means I got sixth place. Yes, and then we tied That's Scott. How it works. We tied Scott at Nova in the Nova narrative in the, the yes. bamboozling affair with the saboteur. <laughs> so we collectively are also at seventh place in the yep. LVO GT. <laughs> That's how this works, right? Because it's all about us. But more importantly, well, not more importantly, importantly to Scott, but you know, more importantly mm-hmm. to the rest of us. Uh, LVO had a preview event, and boy, howdy, Campbell. They previewed quite a bit of stuff. They did. And this time I feel like it wasn't so much. mm, It was a lot of quantity and a lot of quality in very specific places because there were a few things where I'm just like forbidden power and war cry. Nice typography, guys. What else you got for yeah, me? Yeah, so the, the AOS stuff, they, they came out and they're like, oh, we're going to make new battle tomes and make new Grand Alliance books, and we're going to do yep. war cry, which looks like a Kill Team version of AOS. And yep. like, okay. That's dope, but cool. I need to know more before I get excited cool, about cool, cool. it. That being I'm said, not going to get uh, excited about it because I don't play iOS. This is correct. I, I still have that. Uh, well, maybe we'll correct that at some point in the future, but I'm a big fan of the uh, death metal 3D album cover. That is the corn endless spells like the oh, <laughs> skull yes. crying. Blood. Yes, it's like <laughs> in the, the blood that it's crying is what's holding it aloft. Yeah. yeah, I think my favorite comment was what sound does that make? <laughs> it screams. <laughs> it screams. Like, just continuously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, They also are releasing a Sylvaneth uh, warband for Warhammer Underworlds, which, tree ghosts. So we got regular ghosts, we got skeletons, which I guess are inhabited by ghosts, and then we got (laughs) tree ghosts. So the the ghost spectrum is going to be fully realized in Warhammer Underworlds, which I'm a fan of. Yeah, they're they're tree elf ghosts, but uh, yeah, they're, they're doing pretty well. But the meat... Part of the meat and potatoes that was the mm-hmm. LVO. Woo, I am stretching that that fucking metaphor there. Yeah, you are stretching that metaphor like you would stretch a di- dish of meat with potatoes. Uh, we're both doing it now. This this is such a good podcast. I'm so proud we're, of us. So they, I'm very happy right they now. We're talking about what they're going to be releasing for 40K, and they introduced a new box set called Shadow Spear, and it looks like Marines versus Chaos Marines. Uh, Mm -hmm. box art and everything ultramarines versus black legion and bud this shit is off the chain let's start with the primary stuff first because we haven't seen too much of it yet they have shown us the box art and there's a lot of stuff on the box art that looks awfully specific and Mm -hmm. you know games workshop box box art is specific the art is purely representative now none of it is theoretical none of it is very little of it is like from the imagination, it's almost all portraying something specific that right. exists. The miniatures, they're per- portraying the miniatures. And that's not to say the art is bad. The art is very no, no, good. not at all. Uh, but it is definitely uh, note for note representative of the miniatures. So speaking of miniatures, I don't mm-hmm. want to get into too much speculation as what is what on the, on the box art. Uh, there's yeah. p- plenty of that out there. Uh, I do not think that we're going to get Primaris Teleon. I think that's just a captain with a beard, but there's a lot of people out there who got a fucking boner for Teleon, and I got to tell you guys, I don't know if he makes scouts troops. (laughs) No, he makes bikes troops, and he gives them stealth. Perfect. Uh, So, speaking of stealth, though, they released the pictures of models from 
the, what are called the Vanguard Primaris, who are Primaris Marines who looked to be wearing a little bit different armor than regular MKX, mm-hmm. uh, but they have cloaks. Now, this is two yes. good things, two very good things. One, cloaks are great. This mm-hmm. is you, you cannot refute this. Cloaks are fantastic. <laughs> and two, they're cutting down on the number of edges on these Primaris Marines because they're covering them up with cloaks, with cloaks? which we've established are great. Yeah. Yes, so these will paint about twice as fast. The, the, this is fantastic. Okay, so they showed us two uh, models, or I guess four models, but two units. One, the new Vanguard Librarian. I In my notes, he is down as Tactical Wizard. <laughs> I have him down as McCaptain because oh, it looks, yeah, his, his right I, hand looks as if he's tipping a fedora. I have seen, <laughs> again, photoshops of him <laughs> tipping a fedora. So he is in a cloak. He's hooded. He. I like how they even put the cloak over the uh, backpacks. Yeah, which that's, is a that's nice cute. touch. He's also wearing like leather armor from Baldur's Gate. Yes. Yeah. Big fan of that. He, you got to keep those gauntlets pristine, man. Yeah. You can't. You can't let those things get scratched up. So <laughs> no, he's still paying those off. <laughs> yeah. So really cool model. Uh, they've. They. I think they said that he's going to have new powers and stuff too. Which probably hey, fantastic. Very excited to get my hands on that one. And then they mm-hmm. released what I'm even more excited about are Primaris Snipers. Yeah, Eliminators. Right. I wonder and, how they figured that name out. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, Campbell, it's easy. They eliminate shit. You've got Inceptors, they incept things. You've got Hellblasters, yep. they hellblast things. Aggressors, <laughs> they aggress things. Intercessors, they intercede. That's the one. That's yeah. the one you gotta that, you that's remember. The, that's the word. You gotta remember that, yeah. Intercessor, yeah, okay. Anyways, Eliminators looks like a three-man unit of sniper rifles with cloaks, great sculpts. They remind me a lot of the old Metal Scout snipers yes. as opposed to the Plastic Scout snipers, Bad. and that's an extremely good thing. Right, and tons of detail on their guns, tons of detail mm-hmm. on their kits. They have, like, you know, like, you know how Reavers have a lot of, like, straps yeah. and pouches and They're crap all over tactical. them? very tactical. Yeah, extremely tactical I'm very excited to see the rest of these Vanguard yeah. Primaris Marines. It kind of makes me wonder what the point of Stalker Bolters is now, because now there's like there actual no sniper point. rifles. But uh, there's yeah. no point. They're it's they. I th- I, I uh, well, we'll talk about it now. Fuck it. I think they fucked up with their Primaris Bolter and Primaris uh, Plasma Gun profiles. The hmm. Assault Bolter. I think it's fine, honestly, because, yeah. you know, 24-inch range just goes around. It's really good on Death Watch, really good on Death Watch. All right. The bolt rifle is great, especially yeah. now with the bolter rules, the beta bolter rules. Mm. Uh, it's it's really, really good. But the stalker bolter, it firing one shot makes it only ever half as good as the other two options. Yeah. When it can only cause one wound instead of potential two wounds. Mm-hmm. Like it's Even never with that AP. Yeah, it's never going to be close. So it's a heavy weapon. If they made it heavy too, thirty six inch range. Interesting. Yeah, you'd think about taking it. Yeah. Well, it's the same with like the uh, heavy hell blasters. Like thirty six inch they... range, strength eight, overcharging to strength nine, heavy hell blaster gun. I would take it. That would actually be useful. That would but... that could fuck oh, well. up land raiders and knights with no problem because it's yeah. strength nine. Yeah, but but it's heavy one, so there's never any reason to take it. No. <laughs> so I think they fucked up. I, I I think that maybe hopefully down the line they change that to make it more uh, enticing to take. I hope so. Anything other than the rapid fire weapons, but right now I, yeah. I I think it's fucked up. Well, we're in a much more living rule set than we've been in before, so I think there's a possible chance that something like the better beta bolter rule um, <laughs> might actually apply to them at some point in the future. So we've seen two units from the Vanguard Primaris Marines. We're going to see a lot more in coming days. I can't mm-hmm. wait. I imagine that there's, you know, in a month, uh, yeah, a month and a half, we're at Adepticon, and that it's going to be another big preview event there. Very likely. So hopefully we'll see more uh, in that preview event. But let's move on to the Black Legion section yeah. of the shadow spear box and whoa man as yep. much as i love me some primaris marines these fucking black legion models are so goddamn choice oh yeah they're like the new chaos space marines it's like new actually like line infantry i 
love line infantry and I hate the old Chaos Space Marine kit. And the fact these guys look like the Dark Vengeance or Blackstone Fortress Chaos yes. Marines is just like about yes. goddamn time. Yes. They look fantastic. They've only shown three guys so far, but I am fully confident the rest of the kit looks just as cool. They also showed the new Master of Possession, who is right, a, that is, a that's new the dark actual, sorcerer. Yeah, that's the actual title of a Skullboy McHellfucker from a few episodes <laughs> ago. He looks super dope, and if he is not coming out alongside New Possessed, I will be extremely surprised because I assume Master of Possessions has something to do with Possessed. I would assume so. I, I love the idea of a Chaos character who's main thrust of 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 or theme is that they are enabling possession of friendly yeah. or enemy combatants. or enemy that's yeah. a dick move <laughs> like i i think i think that it's like because that's such a niche chaos thing yeah that's like, like hey that we got all these demons this guy over here this guy mm-hmm. knows how to get them into you yeah yeah so I, I yeah, really cool. I really like that as a uh, as a character arc. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we saw the Master Possession. We saw the new Chaos Space Marines. They also showed us new Obliterators. Yeah, he's an absolute unit. Uh, we've seen two. There's one in the video, the short video they did, and then one mm-hmm. they put a picture out. And they're like box dread size. Yeah, they're coming up to that size. They're, they, their feet made me think they're based on Centurions. Yeah. Um, just because they look very similar to those, but uh, they're probably going to be about the same size, and they look buff and terrifying beefy, and like the first good obliv- obliterator models that they've ever put out. Beefy, beefy boys. I'm, they've got like guns protruding from like anywhere on their bodies. There's like some cool shoulder gun stuff happening on one of them. Yeah. Uh, it's really cool. I, I I mean, obliterators always fuck my shit up any game that I, I end up playing against them, and... Uh, finally, they're getting models that really reflect how dangerous and fun they are on the table. Yeah, and also models that look good. <laughs> yeah. Just because yeah. they've not been great models historically. Well, speaking of another good model, the Venom <sighs> Crawler is a brand new vehicle. That thing is so creepy. Looking. It's like a fat spider. It's a, it's a tick. <laughs> yeah, it's no, a tick. No, it's like a big, gross tick. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great. When, yeah, uh, Anne looked over my shoulder when I was like scrolling by the coverage of that, and she just said, "If I'm bring, if I bring that into the house, I'm sleeping in the shed." <laughs> <laughs> it looks really cool. It looks terrifying. Yeah, yeah. It's just another great. Uh, I, I think they're going in such a cool direction with the Chaos Space Marines, taking them a little yeah. away from the Imperial look, and which I think is super good. Yeah. It means they're not just Codex spiky Marines. Yeah, they're they're something different, and the Venom Crawler idea is is cool like we we got the blight crawler and the blight hauler for uh Mm -hmm. for the death guard and so now regular chaos space marines i guess are going to be getting some some cool new vehicles too really really cool Mm -hmm. release so far but there was one more tease at the end of it and i love how they couch this they couch it as a new primaris lieutenant model oh uh, because that's a joke that never stops making me laugh at least yeah Uh, but they showed pieces of what we think is the new Abaddon, the Despoiler. We know it's Abaddon. It's, it's I Abaddon. saw one guy in a Facebook group being like, I can't believe they're bringing Horus back. And everyone's like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, he's wearing a wolf pelt. That means he's Horus, right? And I'm just like, no. Oh, some people no, are, it's, it, are idiots. Some people, yeah, some people might not be the brightest, but uh, yeah, that that's Abaddon and every. Like you're only seeing little bits and pieces of the detail, but they look super cool. If he's standing on top of a dead primary lieutenant, he's probably pretty fucking big. Yeah. So I'm I'd, very I'd excited him. to see that model. I'm hoping it has yeah. a top knot. It better fucking have a top knot. It has the top knot. You can see there's like one of the gl- shots does have like the red top knot. Oh, he, perfect. He's got his extremely fly hairstyle. Excellent. His hair squig. I can't wait to take his head off, put a catachin head on top, and put the ca- <laughs> top knot on top of the catachin head. <laughs> Oh, man, it's the natural yeah. evolution. It, it is. That's just that's the way things go. I'm going to be picking up this box. That I, I'm pretty positive. I don't know why I wouldn't. And I think I'm just going to hold on to the Black Legion stuff and get to it when I get to it. Because, like, I know I want the Primera stuff for my Ultras. But, you know, I, I mentioned I would like to start Black Legion. I think this would be a nice, like, low-key way to do it without, you know, getting too hard into it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to get half the uh, Imperial half of this box set, 100%. All right, sweet. So they showed a new sisters model also at LVO, mm-hmm. which it looks like a sister carrying a reliquary or whatever the standard. Yes, the was. simulacrum imperialis right. from the old uh, old old days looks cool. Looks cool. I want to. I just 
I'm waiting to see the whole range, you know. It's I'm mm-hmm. I'm sure it'll be fantastic. Uh but then in Warhammer Heroes news, a couple of our friends are going to be in the next round of Warhammer Heroes. Carl Tuttle from the Independent Characters and Mike Brandt, uh, who runs Nova Open. So congratulations to you gentlemen. You guys deserve it huge, big time. Uh, the charitable work you guys do is really, really inspiring. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think you could have uh, gone to nicer dudes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's move on to We Make the Call. Campbell, I'm going to do a little bit of divergence here because I found a question <laughs> in our email that I love. Okay. It's from Ryan Post, and -hmm. he says, Hey, dudes, just curious where Dan gets his bird information. My wife (laughs) has suddenly become interested in bird watching, and other than Wikipedia, I don't know of any good resources. Hi, Camberly, which I guess is you. Maybe her. Uh I don't know. She might listen to the show. If she does, and her name is Camberly, hello, but she might be referencing you in a funny name like the way I do at the top of every show. It's very possible. So birds. Okay, two things. My dad has been a bird watcher since the 1970s, and he taught me a lot of the stuff I know. And then I also have a degree in ecology and have oh. <laughs> have been doing nature. Really, I used to work for the Park Authority, like doing that stuff. So my knowledge comes from a lifelong knowledge base of birds and of the natural world and of my local area. But that does not mean that somebody new can't get into that hobby without any difficulty. And my my first suggestion would be to go to a park, specifically a park with naturalists or uh, guides or, uh, you know, nature center or something in your local area and talk to the people there and ask them about just the birds locally. Uh, and maybe somebody will take you around and on a little bird watching trip and can show you where to find the birds and show you hot spots in the area of where to go. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Get somebody with a little bit of expertise uh, to help you out. But also there's this resource, this incredible online resource called eBird, which is where <laughs> bird watchers put in what birds they see, when they see them, and where they see them. Uh, So you can have a living map of where all birds are at all times, which is kind of fucking wild, but it's it's true and it's out there. Uh, And then the third thing I would suggest is go down to your bookstore or your library and uh, buy or check out the National Geographic Guide to North American Birds, assuming that you live in North America. Uh, I think they're on their eighth edition, which is nice because so are (laughs) we Uh, and this will show you what the birds look like where they live what they're what they sound like how they behave uh, where can you find them Uh, and you can just go through there look at the birds in your region and go out there and try to find the ones you think look cool and and just 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 dive in just 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 run into it just have some fun with it bird watching is a great hobby it's outside uh, you walk around, it's relaxing, uh, it helps you appreciate nature. I And if you have any more questions, Ryan, just let me know and I'll be happy to assist. You make the call, the bird call. That's all I have to add to this. Caw-caw. The 40K Birdcast. Here we go. All right, so let's move Dan on. Dan Boyd's bird nest. Let's move on to our first segment of the show and we're calling it Better Battle Reports. So Battle Reports. Mm-hmm. I love them, and yeah. we I've been a huge fan of Battle Reports since the early 90s with what they were putting out in White Dwarf. In the February edition of White Dwarf, they actually took a big trip in the Wayback Machine and brought back Jervis Johnson. Well, not brought back Jervis Johnson. He still works for Game yeah, Workshop. But yeah, they he did, wasn't in cryogenic freezing. But they did bring back Andy Chambers, who yeah. has left the company years ago, and to uh, have a series of Kill Team Battle Reports with Jervis Johnson, and uh, I didn't realize this immediately, but Jervis Johnson has never beaten Andy Chambers in any of the Battle Report games that they've played. Yeah, even in the Third Ed rulebook, there was a a mini Battle Report between the two of them, and I think Andy Chambers won that one too. So they came back and had uh, what looked like a ton of fun uh, playing some Kill Team, and they you know took pictures and documented everything for White Dwarf, uh, and it, it was excellent article. And now White Dwarf is a fully, you know, they have a production staff. They have photographers. They have a magazine layout people, designers. They have everything to make battle reports uh, legible and interesting and engaging. Uh, now, 
they didn't do that for a while when White Dwarf no, was th- not a very was... good product, but now yeah. it is a good product, and their battle reports are better than ever, I think. So we wanted to talk a little bit about how us amateurs can make good battle reports. And we have three different categories of battle reports here, written battle reports, video battle reports, and streaming battle reports, which is the newest one and the most interesting one, I think. Uh, But let's start with written battle reports. And let's quickly, Campbell, talk about what we want to see in a written battle report. And I'll ask you to go first. All right. So I think similarly, like White Dwarf kind of set the golden standard for what these can be. Um, and then it decides to dash that standard in the late 2000s and early 2010s and have like three page long battle reports where you can't tell what happened. But you're right. Like these days they are, if they're not the best they've ever been, they are as close to the glory days as they've ever been, where they have not just beautiful photos, but maps and interviews with the, uh, with the players afterwards, where they can kind of go over the game afterwards. Because one of my favorite parts of any game is talking with my opponent after the battle's over and just kind of you know, having a chat and going over what went right, what went wrong and all that stuff. And that gives you a great sort of, it's kind of like a learning moment at the end of a battle report. So I like personally seeing battle reports where it maybe isn't the most nitty gritty with like every single movement or whatever that happens. Or if you are showing those things, you show them through usage of maps or um, some sort of visual representation like arrows drawn onto the photos and so on. But I like a bit of that. I like having a bit of the uh, narrative in like written in there, like a little bit of sidebars with fluff and so oh, on. Yeah. Oh yeah. And a lot of close up pictures. So like when I was, um, when I was kind of like still posting on like DACA way back in the day. Oh. Um, yeah, I know it. I have a shameful amount of posts in that forum. None of them are from this year. <laughs> and, uh, I used to post a lot of battle reports and like, I'd see people where they just write just text. And I even had a few of these words, like just text. And, who fucking cares? I can yeah, I can read about like, oh, my Dark Angels moved six inches and rapid fired their bolters and won the game. Like, that's fine. That's cool. Whatever. But when, you know, a picture tells a thousand words and I'd rather see a picture of those Dark Angels advancing on the terrain, even if that terrain is, you know, a tissue box and a couple of old batteries, as opposed to, you know, your fully detailed, fully modeled boards. That's just much better to actually look through. So like. I would do a few of those where I just post a few highlight pictures and a few overall maps, and, like, you know, not maps, but, you know, battlefield bird's eye pictures. Shots. Yeah. Yeah. Battlefield shots, bird's eye pictures of the whole, of the whole table and signs that put in a little bit of fluff. Yeah. I cannot say how well it was written. It would probably be right at home in factor fan fiction, but, you know, I was trying, goddammit. And <laughs> I even tried a few times to make ones like white dwarf quality, which, you know, I never could because I don't have a production team or a layout team or graphic designers working for me or a photographer team. It's just me with my phone camera or whatever. But I did make the assets for like arrows and symbols like, you know, you know, how they'll, they'll be like the map where it has like, oh, this little blue circle with a skull is the captain and this circle with the arrow is a tactical squad with a one in it or whatever. I did that for, you know, I have a, I still have the file somewhere uh, with all those little nubbins and bubbins for assembling this sort of thing. And right. I think I'll put a few in the show notes just so people can kind of check them out because they're kind of cool, even if they're, you know, sort of low res for year of war 2019. But those are kind of my favorite sort of battle report, the white dwarf style where it's really mm-hmm. well laid out and you've got visual representations everywhere. And I prefer that to video ones, honestly. Yeah. So yeah, I agree with you pretty much everything, which makes for great fucking radio. Uh, but <laughs> I, I will say that there, I like the turn by turn breakdown uh, yeah. where, where they come in and they say, and they'll say like uh, Jeff's turn one and then, Brenda's turn one and then they'll go back and forth so you can Mm -hmm. get that and you know they'll write out what's happening there Uh, but I think it's really important at the beginning of a battle report to post the list and then pictures of the whole army yeah right like like a set like like a separate photo of an army just like all laid out yeah yeah to to set the stage for the battle report because I want to go through there and especially if they're doing maps like uh, you know uh, drawn maps Mm -hmm. with little icons and stuff. I want to go in there and I want to be able to match up what the maps, what's on the maps to what units and what they look like on the, in the army list itself. Uh, And so it gives you a great idea of, you know, who's actually what I'm sorry, is actually fighting (laughs) in the game. Uh, So I'd agree with pretty much all of your, uh, all of your points there, but just, I, I, I love seeing maps. I like the turn by turn breakdown and I want to see those lists and I want to see whole army shots. 
Yeah, uh, I I don't always. Uh, whenever I do make them, I don't always remember to do lists or whatever. But uh, that's you know that shows where my priorities are. Right. As a player. I've never made a battle report though. I've made a lot of battle impressions where you mm-hmm. know I'm taking pictures throughout the battle and I will post. Uh, you know, just a few words about what happened in the battle, maybe some hit some high points and then post pictures yeah, of yeah. it. Uh, but no, I've never tried to take the time to make an actual full battle report because I got to imagine if you're going to do it right, it's going to take a while. Yeah, no, it used to be like a solid multiple hour process afterwards to put together everything and like write everything up. Like it was a, it would take longer than the game itself yeah. to set it up and make it nice. Nowadays, I just make a Facebook gallery on my Cam Hammer page and just go like, oh, Blood Angels versus Ultramarines, 2,000 points. And, you know, I'll put some notes in there, but mostly it's just a gallery. And honestly, that's at this point what I generally like to consume anyway. Like, I'm not going on, you know, forums or whatever, looking up detailed battle reports at this point. I'm mostly just looking at picture galleries or like Instagram posts or whatever of battles and just going, cool. Kill. And, and, sc- and scrolling past it. Kill. What happens once everyone pivots to video? Well, that's a great question. And I actually, well, Big surprise, the guy who works in audio and video has a lot of opinions about video battle reports. Uh, but I have a lot of opinions about video battle reports. And All right. my first opinion is I don't like any of the big battle report YouTube channels out there. Same. I don't think any of them do a good job. Because uh, most of the battle reports are like two hours long. Yep, and I understand, that, I understand that some people like to put those on while they're painting or something. But I don't think they're necessarily good to listen to uh, when during the games because it's it's... It's just rambling. I think that if you're going to make a video battle report, something that is like edited and is not live, like you have to treat it like you're doing a highlights package. You can't, you can't just like, here's, here's three hours of, of, uh, of, of this game that happened and all the dice rolls and all that shit. Like, I'm not interested in that. I honestly think like, like you could get away with a good video battle report with no actual video footage shot. Of just still pictures and then narration. Like you could, like, okay, okay, here's what I'm envisioning. Mm-hmm. You start out the battle report with some narration, maybe an interview with each player about what they're bringing and why they're bringing it. You post the list, you post a full army shot, maybe you throw in individual shots of the units in there, and that's just scrolling through on the, on the video. With the narration, yeah. because you don't need to have some fucko holding a shaky cam over a table, zooming in real close on all the mm-hmm. fucking units. Like yeah, that—that's that. that's not good. You could you could just take nice pictures of them instead, and then as you're going through the battle, you don't have to have live footage of dice rolling. You don't have to have like a live commentary of uh, uh, like oh I'm, I'm moving up my intercessors so I can shoot at this shit over here like that. I don't, th- I don't think that helps, but if you're taking like still pictures and you're showing where the things are moving and maybe you pull back and give a battlefield shot after a turn or a top of the turn, bottom of the turn and show what's happening, maybe throw in some fun sound effects and like explosion <laughs> uh, effects. Uh, and, and then you're doing things like posting the score and posting the turn. And so when you're clicking around in the video, because, I, you know, a lot of these videos, I'm clicking around to see what's happening. If they've got the score and the turn in, like, the top right corner or something, so I know mm. where I am in the game, like, yeah. that, w- that would be very helpful, too. I think you have to treat it as a highlights package instead of, like, a live sporting event. Yeah, I think that's true of the game altogether. But, like, I used to watch a good amount of video battle reports, and a lot of the time it seemed like, You'd even like there are some out there who actually did have generally good like photography and like videography and so on, where it's like, oh, this is actually in decent focus. And I actually talked to a few people who worked on these um, when I was doing the Cam Hammer channel and all that stuff because I was going to do some video battle reports. And by and large, I found them all to be like, OK, these are all using the same stock music. They're all two hours plus long. They've got a lot of guys talking too close to the microphone and like people who aren't that good at like doing exciting voiceover. And uh, it's just, it's too much for me to really pay attention to it. Like, I was going to make my own. They'd be, like, 15 minutes long, edited video with voiceover going over what happened. And I'd probably take background music from, like, 40K games or whatever. Yeah, that's, um, that's, I'm not, I'm not, I think I'm not, that's great. Yeah, I'm not, I wouldn't be monetizing them. And uh, my plan was at the end, I'd then have, you know, kind of a sit down with the person I was 
playing with and just kind of go over like, oh, you know, even though it's just the two of us sitting around a microphone just recording it over some B-roll of the game, just being like, oh, yeah, I think this went well. I think that went well. Kind of like summarizing the uh, 40K battle reports you'd see in White Dwarf just on video. Like, right. yeah. same format, really, just as video instead of magazine. And if now, you could, if you could knock that, that out but... in like 20 or 30 minutes for, for one of those videos, I'd fucking watch yeah. it, dude. I mean, my plan was 15 minutes, honestly. I wanted it to be punchy. Um, I, be I recorded I recorded one game um, at Dylan's, like, years ago, you know, right when 8th edition dropped. Um, but uh, I just don't have it in me to do, like, that much more video work at the end of the day right now. So Yeah, that's a that's a real thing. I mean, so, something like that is going to take a lot of post-production. Yeah, and there's a lot of chaff to cut. Yeah, and as a guy who does this sort of thing for a living, it's like, that's... It's just hours of work in there. You've got the game, which will, you know, take three hours, but then you've got the stuff around it with the explaining the lists and the interviews afterwards. So you're looking at four hours or so there just to get everything set up. And if you're taking pictures throughout the game and you're set it, you're, and then you're uh, putting them in in the right spot in the video and do it's, it's, oh God, it takes forever. Or I would imagine it would take forever. And oh gosh, if somebody was doing that though, I would subscribe to that channel immediately. Yeah, no, like, I think it can be done right. I just don't think anyone out there is doing it right. There are a few, like, fairly big names who are in this whole yeah. scene who do this sort of yeah. thing, and I know them, and I don't really care for a lot of what they do or so well, maybe, on. Maybe so. maybe maybe I should walk back some of the harshness of my o- original statements because I do want people to put out battle reports. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to watch the two-hour-long battle report. Uh, well, see, there's people who love those, and that's great. Yeah, Go for it. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, and I think that the content being out there is good. It's good for the hobby. It's good for uh, the community. It's it's good for for uh, you know the the meta, if you will. But mm. I, I just I I think it can be done better. And if I had the time to do it, God, uh, man, that would be that would be a lot of fun to actually put yeah. out like good good videos like that. Yeah, if I had the time and staff. <laughs> well, you know what. <laughs> Man, this maybe this is a conversation for for somewhere else, but I can imagine something where someone like someone we know and trust goes and takes a bunch of pictures of their battle or a friend's battle or whatever and sends it to like an editor somewhere and be like, here are the pictures. And that editor's got music and some graphics and and has like a detailed write up of something to put together. And that could be that could be fun. You know, yeah, that could that well. could be a, a job that someone could do. But whatever. <laughs> uh, so let's move on uh, to streaming games now streaming games yeah. is a relatively new thing that people are doing and this is live entertainment and i think that one of the things that w- games workshop is doing the best with the community team is mm-hmm. their stream for games their live yeah, stream I think games they're leading that whole field they are doing such a good job of it the uh i think there are improvements to make for for mm-hmm. their for their streams, but they're minor improvements. I love the fact that they have hosts for the games that are talking throughout the games. It's not the players talking because the players talking not, not generally no like like the players talking. You're going to have one person who's doing their turn, who's probably not yep. going to be doing a ton of talking. You're going to have a, a second person who's watching the other person do their turn and is probably doing a lot of thinking. Or at least that's what I do during other person's turn, doing a lot of thinking about what they're I'm going to do on my turn. Uh, mm-hmm. And having hosts in a live like you look you if you watch live esports ever, there's always hosts and commentators. Oh yeah, because because just watching the feed of the video games or or whatever is being played uh, without any commentary is far less entertaining than it is with commentary. And I love the fact that Games Workshop does commentary on their uh, on their streams, and they also do graphics. They have scores up. They have turn mm-hmm. counters up. They have a dice cam. They have uh, the multicam setup is huge. Like it's, they do a really, really good job. And if you haven't watched a Twitch stream of Games Workshop Community with their setup, that I think they usually have it set up in Warhammer World in a corner, and they then they also do a bunch of streams from all of the At events every con. they go to. Yeah. Like you owe owe it to yourself to go and watch one of these streams. They're actually very entertaining. Now they go on for hours because yeah. it's a Warhammer game. But if you've got that going in the background and painting or something like that, that can be a lot of fun. 
All right. So here's the thing. This doesn't sound all that different from those video battle reports that are two hours right, plus. Right. But those video battle reports that are two hours plus, that's not live. It's it's not live action. Like when you're watching ESPN at night after all mm. the sports have finished, they're not showing you a full replay of the baseball game that just happened. Right. They're showing you the highlights of it. Yeah. They're giving you the highlights package. Like the, and and people tune into that stuff. Why is Sports Center, maybe not for you, but for other people, Sports Center is a hugely popular show because they boil down the important things that happen and they show you clips of the cool stuff, of the fun stuff, of the important stuff. Mm. And I think that when you have a non-live product, an edited product, it should be edited in a manner that introduces the matter in a way that's easy to digest, fun and entertaining. It doesn't drag on in a live atmosphere. You've it, it. There is going to be time when nothing fucking happened, when people are moving models right. around, and your hosts, your commentators, have to make up the energy and make up what's yes. going on, and they have to make up for the fact that you're watching two people push models around on a table. <laughs> yeah, because there is a lot of downtime. There is like. A lot of movement phases and a lot of things that aren't that exciting happening. Uh, and I think that's why you need to have minimum two commentators just so you can have that dynamic going back and forth. And they can talk about off topic stuff. And, you know, because there's not that much to talk about when someone's moving 300 orcs across the table. Uh, but it just I find them, frankly, pretty boring. And I think GW does them better than anybody else out there. But I just find the format to not be that interesting because like I used to do some um, I used to watch video game live streams uh, actually when I was like kind of into competitive Starcraft and this whole sort of scene is kind of taken from that competitive esports scene like it's a very similar format. Uh, but I find it works better for video games because they're so much faster and matches are so much shorter. So you don't have, you know a three hour video where someone's trying to fill in a lot of blank space, they might go like, hi, I'm XYZ. I'm going to talk about this for a minute while, you know, people are building their bases in Starcraft or whatever. But after that, there's enough going on that you don't have to fill much void. It is pretty much all just commentating on action just by the nature of what the product is. And I find tabletop gaming doesn't really have that. It's not moving fast enough for that commentating to really catch my attention, even if I like the commentators. And I've watched plenty. I've watched a ton of Warhammer uh, live streams on Twitch. Like I watched a lot, especially when 8th edition started up. Um, but it's just it's not for me. So I, I get what you're saying. I do like the streams as background noise. Yeah, well, yeah, you're not saying they're transfixed to your television for three hours watching. No. Like, ooh, is he going to move that next orc six inches? Ooh, they moved that orc five inches. Fascinating. Yeah, so if I'm, like, if I've run out of podcasts or something, uh, mm. or if I'm extremely bored at work, I will, <laughs> I, I can throw a stream on in the background and, and, and listen along with that. And it's mainly listening along with that. But you're listening to yeah. the commentators for the most part. I mean, I listen to, when, during the baseball season, I listen to a lot of baseball games on the radio while I paint. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I like that sort of background noise where there's a, an activity happening and people are describing it to you. Uh, yeah. I, I do think the Games Workshop commentators and announcers, they, they, I think they have uh, one or two people that are almost always on the streams. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that they could learn something from live sports as far as like what, how to, how to describe what's going on in the game. Cause a lot of times yeah. they'll like for 45 minutes, go to Twitch questions and go on tangents and then come back with like, Oh, it's Greg's movement phase mm-hmm. and he's moving his stuff. All right. Back to this talk about our favorite types of cookies. Like, th- <laughs> like that, uh, like that's, that's fine. Uh, and, it, and I like it when people inject themselves into, you know, their par- personalities and some fun and stuff like that. But I think that they could learn something from the way sportscasters are descriptive about what is going on. Uh, yeah, I get that. And I, th- I think that they could, you know, try a little harder to really do a better job describing the action that's going on. And that's mm-hmm. not to say they're not doing a bad job, uh, I, but I, I, I do think that they could improve. But again, the Games Workshop, I think, is the best out there with their streams uh, right now. Yeah. And these are also largely people who didn't, you know, train to be sports commentators or whatever. They are hobbyists who have ascended to working at Games Workshop in some capacity. And this is just what their position is at the moment. Right. Like, and and for people who are getting interested in streaming, you can actually you don't actually have to spend a ton of money to get something like this set up. You can buy a couple of those Logitech webcams. You know those mm-hmm. ones with the little blue borders on them when they're on. Yep. Uh, those those things are what fifty bucks a pop. 
they Maybe. they shoot in HD. They have a wide lens, and you can get a couple of uh, uh, camera light stands, like photo uh, photography light stands, which like, are like yep. cheap ones on Amazon or something. And just get that, make a big arch over the table with it. Suspend a small webcam from the top. Boom, you've got your top down uh, camera. Mm-hmm. You grab a DSLR or uh, or you know an older model digital camera. Uh, you know, video recording camera or camcorder rather. Uh, and uh, then you've got some close-up shots to make. You've got some action shots you can do. Uh, but I, I think the, the main thing is if you're going to start getting to streaming, you, it's a multi-person thing, man. It's got to be like two people commentating, two people playing. And yeah. uh, you're, cause you've got to make up for the fact that there's just not a whole lot going on during a Warhammer game. Yeah, completely. Okay. Battle reports. I love them. Uh, you know, we we all love them, and, and there's clearly a market out there for them. If you guys have any suggestions on what you think makes a better, better battle report, God, that's hard. Uh, <laughs> feel free to write in, contact at 40kbadcast.com. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. Uh, so, But let's move on uh, to our second yeah. segment here, and uh, I'm calling this one the Primaris Chambers. Now, I was yeah. got, got close to talking about this earlier when we were talking about new stuff, uh, but I quickly want to draw a parallel. Uh, between mm-hmm. what we saw at L- LVO and what we've seen so far for the Stormcast Eternals in AOS. Now, uh, I'm not an AOS player, and I am not, I, I barely know any of the Stormcast <laughs> lore. But what I do know is that Stormcast has these things called chambers. And each yeah, chamber, there's 36 of them. Each chamber is like s- some sort of battlefield role or some sort of theme behind each chamber right. that uh, every every Stormcast from that chamber embodies an aspect of that theme. There's like a magic chamber, which I think yeah, was the, like the, the most recent one that opened up. Yeah, the Sacrosanct chamber are like wizards and fire support. The Vanguard chamber are scouts and fast cavalry. And the Stormcast Eternals are just the rank and file. Like those are your guys with hammers and shields. So generally. these chambers are... To me, uh, I, I think they're cool. Like that, you're going to have they they open them up. When, when I'm doing air quotes right now, where <laughs> when they when Sigmar thinks that he needs to add more variants to his his uh, legions, uh, but the way that they presented the Vanguard Primaris Marines at LVO makes me think that they're going to be treating Primaris Marines in a very similar manner. I think so, too, uh, because in both cases, they're taking the core concept of the army, the core concept of Stormcast Eternals and Primaris, and taking either one unit or one aspect or one archetype of them and fleshing it out further. So in this case, with the um, the Vanguard, the Vanguard Primaris, not the Vanguard Stormcast, very different. Um, <laughs> to me, it feels like they're taking the uh, Reavers and extrapolating from there okay yeah because reavers because they have like the same kind of leg armor and yeah. the same like tactical pouches and all that stuff uh, tactical. and they seem kind tactical i'm sorry um <laughs> tactical pouches and scopes and all that stuff and it feels like they're fleshing that out which is kind of like taking the old scout marine idea but emphasizing the marine over the scout yeah so my question to you campbell is do you like this direction for the upcoming primaris releases I think it's a very neat way to expand an army and kind of create an army within an army. Because in the case of Age of Sigmar, I think I'm correct here. Um, if you take an army of just, say, Sacrosanct Chamber or an army of just Vanguard Chamber, you have access to different, like, army abilities and different, you know, stratagem-type things. As But you can still take everything all together if you want to, too, and have it still be a cohesive army that gets certain bonuses. And I feel like, I mean, I don't know this for sure, but I think it's very possible that we'll be seeing the same thing happen here, where it's like, oh, if you take an all-Vanguard Primaris army, you get access to these stratagems or I think, these psychic powers or whatever. I think it'll be it'll come down to detachments. Yeah, So yeah, I yeah. think the whole idea of specialist detachments, like, whenever we get the next Space Marine Codex... Uh, I think we're going to see stuff like that. Like you can take a detachment that's just Vanguard Marines. Like you could take a, like a, a you could take a Vanguard Vanguard detachment <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you could get access because then, and the members of that detachment could maybe get access to different stratagems or abilities or something uh, mm-hmm. and bring a little more flavor and potentially unlock some more 
abilities for your army on the battlefield. Uh, I'm actually a little bit trepidatious about this. Really? Yeah. I. So I like the fact that there's a lot of synergy that goes on within a Space Marine army list where you've mm-hmm. got a librarian and he's buffing units left and right. You've got captains who have these auras that help out. Mm-hmm. And I'm worried that if they're going to break the Primaris Marines down into chambers, the different chambers aren't going to be able to talk to one another. You know what I mean? I can understand that. I mean, in AOS, they still can talk to each other. They just might get some extra bonuses if they're only talking to their own chamber, you know? Right. Um, but like, uh, and also like if you want to, okay, let's say that they have a troops choice for the Vanguard upcoming. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks like they do from the box art. Uh, yeah, there's some tactical arrows in there. Yeah. So... This troops choice, like, are you going to have to take, like, are, are you going to have a, a Vanguard troops tax involved mm. with unlocking the Vanguard specialist abilities? Or can I just use my sizable horde of intercessors to provide yeah. uh, troops choices to, for, like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I like the fact that in 8th edition 40 right now, you can, there's so much customization and mixing and matching that you can do with mm-hmm. your armies, uh, and I'm worried that it's going to be like, you know, they're cutting off the flow of army building and saying it was like, well, you're clearly going to build for advantage in this direction or this direction and going and free forming it is not really going to work too well. If you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah but then again, I don't yes. know how it works in AOS. I might, I might be way off base here. Uh, you're a bit off base, but also AOS is a bit more um, laissez-faire with how you can construct an army. Um, like there's not the same sort of restrictions you have in 40 K there's different ones, but I, I I mean, I don't know for sure at this point, like we, we don't have their full rules down or anything. We don't have any of the rules down actually. No, we don't. I, I don't think they're going to make it so you can't take Vanguard chamber along with regular Primaris Marines in the same detachment. I just think you might get some special bonuses if you take all Vanguard, but also the thing that excites me about this is like you were saying, I don't want to pay a Vanguard troops tax. But with these little separate chambers, they don't need to provide troops. So let's say there's an aggressor chamber, you know, so to speak, uh, that comes out, or an inceptor chamber. They might only have God, options for not. like. Oh God, yeah, I hope it, not. I hate. The, I fucking hate inceptors so much. The bu- the bumble boy hive. <laughs> um, but like, imagine if it's just like it's just like kind of an extrapolation on the inceptors we have. Maybe like a flyer inceptor, which is I don't know, like five guys who go together, like Voltron. I don't fucking know. And an inceptor. Okay, inceptor tell me more. Captain. Now I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> but like about you just have like a few options, like an, an HQ or two, an elite troop and a fast attack or something like that. And that's all the there is for the inceptor chamber. Well, that's what those specialist detachments are for. Yeah. So you don't need to build like, you know, a, you know, a uh, brigade or whatever the fuck with a bunch of bespoke troops for everything. OK. And I think that's where this uh, this can really become very freeing. All right. Instead, instead of kind of bogging you down with too many troops taxes despite my somewhat uh anxiousness about the how they're gonna put this stuff out um i am very excited to see what they come up with and uh i uh, i have ideas campbell Mm -hmm. about what what chambers they should i would like to see like some sort of uh like you said aggressor chamber where it's everybody's close combat oriented and it's like, mm-hmm. you, I personally, as a Raven Guard player, I'd love to see a lot of Lightning Claws involved in this, though we have yet <laughs> to see Lightning Claws on a Primaris Marine. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm i very excited to see what they come up with for this. And I would love a punchy chamber. <laughs> you want a rumble and frenzy from uh, Transformers is what <laughs> yeah. you want. And they can go together to form Devastator. There we go. First well, you that, crack the shell, and then you crack the nuts inside. <laughs> that's right. I'm, uh, I'm quoting an anime, and you all can <laughs> suck it. <sighs> I'm, I'm so glad. Next, next thing you know, I'll be, I'll be quoting a sport. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you miss every shot you, you, you that you don't hit. Thank you. That's that's by Wayne Grotsky. <laughs> is he an is he an orc? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's the greatest orc of all time. All right, let's uh, let's move on to. Uh, uh, you, y'all know what, it, what time it is. Y'all know what fucking time yeah, it is. It's fucking yeah, time yeah, yeah. You know fact it of fan it's fiction. It's time for fact fiction, yeah. It's time for big fact and small fiction. All right. G- g- uh, give me something uh, Give me something with some good mouthfeel to it this time around. Mm. 
Give me one moment to uh, hydrate before I dehydrate. You slackers! Is this how the best cavalry unit in the Imperium performs? Ooh. Period. Retrieve your wounded, get back here, and then attack again, but this time use your damn heads. Colonel Hermano Raven was an overly large man, Ooh. but his bellow was loud, especially over the Vox. He was of average height and a slim build, though he was defined in his musculature from years of hard training as guards men. He rose through the ranks as a survivor, and he made sure his men were intelligent, independent, dependable soldiers that could survive as well. He knew not all would make it, but some end if he did his job right most will. <laughs> his high fade cut hair bristled with sweat from his earlier tensions of taking care of his own beast. <laughs> not an easy task. What? Was he, he was, was he pooping or jacking it? That's the he question was I want to know. His own beast, and it is not an easy task. <laughs> He was originally a worm rider himself and still was with a beast that he raised and hatched himself. Oh, they're he being literal. Yeah, I know. It's not metaphorical. Oh, shit. He had a reputation for being an analyst and being courageous when called upon. His leathers were well worn and only the dark green outline of the black panther patch denoted his rank above the rest of the regiment. Another thing odd about him was his connections to the forge that supplied his men with equipment. His brother was a majos there, and his brother supplied him with a piece of equipment that usually go to Skatarii to ride to battle with to protect him. A taser lance. Ooh. Otherwise, he was equipped fair average for a colonel, including a series pattern bolt pistol, light power armor, more pattern power sword and an array of other devices and weapons oh, nice. he also had bionics but that wasn't apparent to the naked eye so much as his brother did him well at getting his brother the best he could <laughs> offer <laughs> <sighs> that was one of the reasons his regiment was chose to escort a forge world expeditionary fleet he had them trained on their homeworld in the same sector where these beasts roamed and only the best could tame one okay so what are these beasts they are worms W-Y-R-M-S. Oh, so like dragons. Yes, this is very much like his Dragon Riders of Pern crossover fan fiction with the numbers filed off, I think. I don't know what Dragon Riders of Pern is. Oh, it's a, uh, it is a fantasy book series that I read when I was a kid. And I think Dragon... I don't think Dragon Lance is connected. I forget. I remember Dragon anyway, Lance. Yeah. I read, well, I read some Dragon you... Lance books. All right, I but you know I what I, I did? S- I, okay, well, this is fan fiction. It's it's got to be. It's 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 terrible. Yeah, Colonel Ermano <laughs> Raven, uh, who is both an overly large man and a man of average height and slim build. No, um, was it, wasn't it? Character. He wasn't an overly large man. No, it says Colonel Ermano Ar- Raven was an overly large was an overly large man. Okay, he was of average height and a slim build. Okay. He, brother brother he Raven. Bo- bo- That's well, what hermano is, means in Spanish. Now, does, if hermano has three R's and two N's, does that still mean brother? No. <laughs> <laughs> because it does here. <laughs> Every time. Hermano. All right. Well, thanks but, for that, man. That was great. Yeah. I, I was hoping for more descriptions of his, <laughs> his fucking kit, his inventory. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, everybody in here is like it's almost like uh fucking my immortal with how much detail they go into yeah. describing everybody's outfits. Like there is an inquisitor named Randall who <laughs> quote wore his black carapace armor with the holy seal of the inquisition on its breast over that he wore a, bla- a tattered black trench coat. Oh, cool black trench coat. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, we got our mall goth <laughs> Randall. Inquis- inquisitor mall goth. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> uh, he's over there by the Panda Express, <laughs> hand rolling his own cigarettes with cheap tobacco because he only works part time and can't afford nice tobacco. That was that's like that's like I don't know ni- nineteen people I knew in high school in college. <laughs> Did any of them smoke clove cigarettes? Because I didn't meet anyone who smoked all oh, okay. of them. I didn't meet anyone who smoked clove cigarettes until college. Wow, you were lucky or not lucky. Okay, let's uh, <laughs> let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, we'll do some plugs before we go. Send us yep. emails, contact at 40kbadcast.com. We need content for We Make the Call. I want to hear more about birds you see. Uh, we had a great email the other day from a listener who sent us a bunch of pictures of his Tyranids and Gene Steeler cults, and I am all about that shit. They were fantastic. Dope. Send us, uh, yeah, like like I said, questions, birds. Uh, send Campbell stuff about, I don't know, cats. You like cats. 
Yeah, cat, cats and cats and anime and Warhammer are really the three things I know anything about. Yeah, uh, but yeah, please get at us. Uh, send us your thoughts about what's going to be happening with the uh, Stormcast. I mean, Primaris Marines. <laughs> <laughs> They're called Sig Marines. I'll have you and, know. And uh, really want to hear about <laughs> what you guys think about battle reports. If there are video battle reports or va- battle report streams that you really like, please send that information to us. I would love to check them out personally. Yeah, if something is a bit more what I'm looking for, like around the 10 to 15 minute mark, and it's just like snappily edited and well presented, I'd be very interested in checking that out. So if if that exists, please send it along. Yeah, it would be great to see. Uh, you can get at us on social media, Twitter. Uh, I am at DB underscore Sleazy. He is at Brother SRM. And uh, we, lately on Twitter, I've been, uh, well, I've been... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> retweeting a lot of baseball players complaining about how the two most uh, the two most skilled free agents on the market still don't have a job, and it's very very interesting to one such as I, Campbell. I've been tweeting about swords. <laughs> <laughs> Campbell is also on Tumblr. He is Cam Two D on Tumblr, and you can look at. My model's there, although I haven't posted any in a bit because I haven't broken out my actual photo setup in a minute. Well, he'll need to because he finished a bunch of shit recently. I Won't did. you, I've got, I've, got a, I've got a lot to take pictures of and post up there. Good. But if you'd like to support the show, you can go to shop.spreadshirt.com slash 40kbadcast and get any one of our shirts and any one of our cuts or colors. They are all cool and all extremely flammable. I and have if you a suggestion to- for a shirt. Oh, oh, shoot. shoot I'm, shoot, I'm shoot. running this by you in public now where everybody can see okay. it. Oh, my God. I All want right. to make a sleeveless T-shirt uh-huh. that says Cult of the Swole Armed Emperor. Cult of the Swole Armed Emperor. All right. Um, because, you know, there's a gene stealer cult. I, and I, I, know, I know. Forearmed. Cult, of the Emperor. cult yep. of the, But it's, this one's sleeveless. It's gun, sun's out, guns out. Or yes, the or in, <laughs> inside gun arm. Con, hmm. uh, I don't have a concealed carry permit. I can't wear this shirt. Yeah, yeah, no. Call to the swole armed emperor. What do you think? You like it? Or, or I think I like that better than the pop off princes. But uh, that's pretty all right. Ooh, the pop. Okay. Oh, we got ideas. All right, all right. We're gonna have to hit the drawing board for these shirts. But yeah, we've got four shirts right now. We've got our Badcast Bad shirt, the Budcast Bud shirt, the uh, the perfect shirt, which is unbelievable in how perfect it's it perfect. is. It's perfect. It's uh, perfect. And then the newest one, the Edging Enthusiast shirt, which I uh, wore to our campaign day the other day, uh, and it got yeah. great reviews there. And uh, some Excellent. people have show. Uh, tweeted and emailed us pictures of their edging enthusiast shirts i highly suggest you wear it to work i I also highly suggest you get either the white shirt option or the black shirt option someone got a brown shirt option probably to kind of uh for some reason i can't really follow but uh it it loses a certain je ne sais quoi when it's not on don't black or white downplay the edging enthusiasm lean into it Okay, uh, then Edge into it. you can support the show in another way by going to Patreon and uh, signing up as a supporter. We have yep. three different tiers. Uh, I don't really feel like explaining what they are right now, but if you are interested, you can go to patreon.com slash 40 kbadcast and check it out. We are close to 100, uh, what do we call them, subscribers? Supporters? Patrons. Yeah, patrons. Bad fucks. Thank you. Whatever. Uh, we're close to 100. We'd like to hit that 100 mark soon. Uh, so if you're feeling it, go on over and give that a shot. Campbell? We love to end the show with an inspirational quote before we get the hell out of here. Do you have something for us this time around? As usual, I do. The only true gift is zeal. Not seal, but zeal. Though seal was a wonderful gift to humanity, especially with his hit song, (laughs) Kiss from a Rose. (laughs) The only true gift. Which I think was, (laughs) was, was put out for the Batman and Robin movie starring George Clooney and that guy. I thought that um, Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me was from that also. They have a lot of songs Baby, about Kiss Me on that soundtrack. I can pay you to a kiss from a rose on the gray. Baba, 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 don't know the words to this part. Sorry, I got, I got a little carried away. <laughs>